Mayor Martini? Here. Council members Raddy? Here. Lawson? Here. Smith? Here. Kerrigan? Here. Schmidt? Here. City Attorney's Office, Doug Thornley? Here. And City Manager Driscoll? Here. Thank you. Okay, I see we have no invocation speaker today. Yes. We do? It says no, but okay. And I don't remember your name. I'm sorry. Come on up. Yeah. Give us your Pete name. Foster. Pete, how are you? I'm sorry. It says here none, so I'm. I know. It's on my calendar. You're not so none. You're Pete. I'm none. I'm here. Pete, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, we're not nobody. We're somebody. And uh, the city council <laughs> is great, and the mayor is great, and we're so grateful that you are bringing this city along and doing great things for us. So today, we ask for your wisdom beyond our capabilities. You said if we need it, ask it and you'll give it. And so we need that now. Bless our city, continue to bring enterprise and business, continue to protect our police, our fire, and those who make our city great and safe. And we thank you for your blessing on this meeting. In your mighty name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Vossler. I appreciate that from uh, none. That's good. There you go. <laughs> uh, would you remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance? Uh, Mr. Thornley, would you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next is comments from the public. I have no speaking cards. Anyone want to speak under comments from the public? Come on up, Ted. Oh, he's way up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, come on up anyway if you want. It's all right. All right, seeing no speaking cards, we'll move on to approval of the agenda. Anybody want to take anything out of order? Not looking for a motion to approve. Mr. Smith? Move to approve. Mr. Lawson? Second. Moved by Councilman Smith, seconded by Councilman Lawson to approve the agenda as outlined by staff. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. 3.1, consideration of possible approval of the minutes of the Council Workshop of May 27, 2014 and the regular Spark City Council meeting of June 9, 2014. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Not looking for a motion, Mr. Lawson. Move to approve. Ms. Ratty. Second. Moved by Councilman Lawson, seconded by Councilwoman Ratty to approve the minutes of the workshop of May 27th and the regular meeting of June 9th. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. Announcements, presentations, proclamation, Parks and Recreation Month. Uh, Ms. Ratty, and then I do have a public comment, I believe. Whereas parks and recreation programs are an integral part of communities throughout this country, including Sparks, Nevada, and whereas our parks and recreation are vitally important to establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our communities, ensuring the health of all citizens, and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of a community and region, and whereas parks and recreation programs build healthy, active communities that aid in the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those who are mentally or physically disabled, and also provide the mental and emotional health of all citizens, and whereas parks and recreation programs increase a community's economic prosperity through increased property values, expansion of the local tax base, increased tourism, the attraction and retention of businesses, and crime reduction, and whereas parks and natural recreation areas improve water quality, protect groundwater, prevent flooding, improve the quality of the air we breathe, provide vegetative buffers to development, and produce habitat for wildlife, and whereas parks and recreation provide a place for children and adults to connect with nature and recreate outdoors, and whereas we recognize the vital contributions of our employees and volunteers in parks and recreation who keep public parks clean and safe for visitors, provide events and programming for all ages and abilities, advocate for more open space and better trails, and ensure that parks and recreation facilities are safe and accessible places for all citizens to enjoy. Now, therefore, I, Gino R. Martini, Mayor of the City of Sparks, Nevada, do hereby proclaim July 2014 as Parks and Recreation Month. Congratulations.
Go ahead, Tracy, and then I have a public comment. Okay. Thank you. Um, Tracy Dominguez, Parks and Recreation Director. I just want to, on, on behalf of our department, as well as the National Parks and Recreation Association, challenge everyone to take the out is in 31 day challenge. And what that means is attempt to get outside every day in July and take one thing that you normally do inside and do it outside. Whether it's a meeting, uh, a lunch meeting, um, Whatever it is, get outside and, and do it outside every day in July. Thank you. Thanks, Trace. Okay, uh, Nathan Daniel. Come on down, sir. You have three minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, Nathan Daniel, I'm the director of Truckee Meadows Parks Foundation. Uh, and I just want to take the opportunity to thank you and, and commend you for uh, proclaiming July Parks and Recreation Month. I think our parks are often uh, underappreciated but used heavily, uh, so it's really important that we um, thank the, the staff, especially uh, uh, Director Dominguez and her staff work tirelessly um, and ever since the beginning of the recession they're working at reduced funding levels and reduced staffing levels so um, you're, you're getting a great value out of uh, the staff that you have there's absolutely no doubt about that they do a tremendous amount of work and not to call anyone out and sp specifically but um, Andre Stiegel I know I, I call her on Fridays and I know that's her day off uh, she's in the office almost every Friday so um, I'll just say uh, yeah you, you have a really fantastic staff working so thank you Nathan, thank you. Uh, we, we do have a great staff, and what they've done in the uh, recession years has been uh, tremendous, really, for, for how it's been. And stuff. So I appreciate you coming by and letting us know that. We appreciate that. And Mr. Eddie. Before, before you walk away. Yes. So I wanted to thank the Parks Foundation for a series that they're promoting right now, which they're hosting weekly walks in the park. Do you want to tell people a little bit more about that so folks know? Uh, thank you uh, for the opportunity. Uh, we are doing a uh, free uh, guided walk every Thursday evening in all of the park, well, in sp specific parks in Sparks, Reno, and Washoe County. Um, the next walk is on Thursday. It's actually at Virginia Lake over in Reno, and then the one after that is back in Sparks, I believe. I have to check the, the our red, is it, yeah, Rock Park would be the following week, so we'll be down there. Um, and the whole idea is to, again, give people uh, an opportunity to get outside and explore our parks. There's so many that, uh, there's so many great facilities that we have here that are underappreciated, potentially. Uh, people just don't know they're there. They're in their backyard. And uh, people have a tendency not to go to the, uh, the recreational opportunities they have right in their own backyard. So um, that's, the, that's the goal of our, our series. It's free, open to the public every Thursday evening at 7 o'clock p.m. And you can check our website, uh, which is at Truckee Meadows Parks Foundation, for our schedule. So thank you. Thank you for bringing all those volunteers into the Parks Program. Appreciate it. Thanks, Nathan. Okay, consent items. Anybody want to pull a consent item? If not, looking for a motion. Mr. Schmidt? Uh, motion to approve items 5.1 through 5.7 as outlined by staff. Ms. Ratty? Second. Moved by Councilman Schmidt, seconded by Councilwoman Ratty to approve a consent items 5.1 through 5.7. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. General business 6.1, consideration of possible approval of the amended extension to the agreement for Golden Eagle Regional Park concession services between the City of Sparks and SVAL LLC. Tracy. Good afternoon, Mayor Martini and Council Members. Tracy Dominguez, Parks and Recreation Director. Director today, uh, before you is um, a request to amend our existing agreement with SBAL. Um, they run the um, Red's Golden Eagle Grill restaurant out at Golden Eagle Regional Park. They've been doing this for five years, <coughs> and um, we're at a point now in the agreement where they are uh, exercising their right to extend the agreement for another five years. And they have requested a change in the financial situation, basically the amount of rent that they pay. Um, first, let it be known that this um, has proven to be a challenging business model. Being in the center of a uh, sports complex is something different than what's been done before. And um, therefore, 
it's just it's just created a challenge you know we have a lot of programming out there and and it's serving its purpose but um, the rent is awfully high if, as you see in my report um, the I'm sorry this printed very lightly and <laughs> The, the going rate is $2 a square foot. They're currently paying over that per square foot. That price is based on the uh, tenant paying for other amenities, such as the common area outside, utilities and all of that. They do not pay that. So the request is to reduce their rent from 8000 a month, just over 8000 a month, down to 4000 per month. Um, Effective with the new the the current agreement expires, I believe, July 15th, and so it would be effective with that renewal at that time. Um, that's really it in a nutshell. If if you want, I'll be here to answer any questions. We also have the owners of the restaurant in the audience to address any concerns that you might have as well. Questions, Mr. Lawson. Couple of things. Tracy, um, we we didn't negotiate at all. This is, this is their proposal. We didn't counter off for anything. No, I did not. Okay. And uh, we pay twenty five thousand dollars a year, and the extra fees is what I saw. Is that correct for, for utilities? Uh, utilities and all, and all of the above. So, um, well, I'll tell you what. After looking at this and reading the history and it sounds like you may have been overrated a little bit um, I, I'd, I'd like to, to rebid it I'd like to see it go back out to bid I'd like to extend their contract for six months till January that's when the contract should end in my mind anyways when there's nothing going on out there it shouldn't end right in the center of all the activity at, at the park so that, that's if I uh, if yeah, there are any other questions, I'll be happy to make a motion, but uh, that's what I'm going to suggest we do. Other questions, Mr. Smith? You know, uh, I, for one, I want to thank you for being out there. It adds a lot to the park and uh, it, the amenities that you provide, although, they, you know, more people could be using them, and I make a, a commitment that I'll be out there a couple times this year to use your facilities and I, because I haven't been. Uh, it's just not something I think about. But uh, I think um, if I could ask my question, how much – how much money do you put into uh, getting that place ready? Come on, okay. down. Come on down, sir. Just give your name for the record, if you don't mind, please. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, uh, Council Members. My name is Jack Sterling. I'm one of the uh, members of SFAL LLC. And to answer your your, your question, Mr. Smith, we uh, we put in over a million dollars in and upgrades into that facility. We basically built the entire uh, right. restaurant facility right. upstairs. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Kerrigan. I can't see. What, what's the term of this contract? I, I, didn't, I can't find it. It's, it's a fit. The, the original agreement was a five-year term with two options to extend five years each. So we're at the, at the end of our first five-year term, and we wish to continue this agreement for the next 10 years with that another option to renew or um, extend, sorry, at five years from now. Okay, so, there, so if there's, no, like, there's no place in the contract that we can take a look at it in a year <clears throat> to see how things are going. It's not written that way at this point. It's, a, it's to um, extend at the end of five years. So okay. we're, we're just continuing. We're in a 15-year agreement, so to speak, now, and we're at that first five year, and we're, we're discussing the next two trimesters, if you will, that, um, that we reevaluate in five years, see how they're doing in, in, in sales. Okay. Sir, are you, are, uh, I mean, l let me ask you what, what your thoughts are about extending this for six more months and then rebidding what, what um, under the terms of our of our contract, we ex we exercised our option within the given 120 day term prior to it, its uh, expiration. Um, we are fully intent, uh, quite honestly, of of honoring the commitment that we made in exercising our our option. 
we pursued a, uh, a modification, some lightening of the uh, lease payment, the financial terms of the, uh, of the contract and discussions that started back in January with Tracy. Um, we knew full well that there was the, uh, the, the possibility that council would, uh, would deny that. Could, could potentially um, want to negotiate uh, a, a different financial term. Uh, but we have every in intent of honoring the commitment we've made in exercising our option. Okay. Tracy, how many people bid on this when we, for, when we let this out? There was just two. Okay. Mr. Schmidt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I first want to say thank you for what you did on out there. You know, five years ago, things were much, much different in this community. You put a million dollar investment, I'll take it face value of what you did to open up a restaurant. And, and uh, you know, this community was different five years ago. And I want to say thank you. You know, that's, that's quite a, a big gamble. Um, I also understand businesses that, you know, things are, are turning, you know, a profit. You got to go and find a way to go and cut costs. And in, in your business, it's very difficult to cut a lot of costs without cutting, cutting quality. And the last thing we want to do is, is cut quality on out there. I want to have a, a, a nice place people come and people can remember. I also thank you for honoring your commitment for the next 10 years. I, I think that's important to put that on the table. I, I have, um, questions that I've talked to staff and everything about the reduction and, and I, I'm, I'm okay with the reduction in, in the fee. What I'm not okay with is that if we said six months, a year, whatever, to come back five years, whatever, what is the different results that I can expect in the performance of the, of the business versus now? It's not the 40, the, you know, 48,000, whatever we're cutting, the, the, the 50,000. That's not an issue to me right now. What's the issue to me is, what is the marketing plan? What what are we going to expect difference in the next five years? Or, or five years from now, we come back on the table and say we need to, you know, we still have the same problem. That's my concern. Um, I think in the packet that um, we at least saw that was provided to you on this agendized item, it speaks to the revenue that the uh, that the restaurant uh, has generated in its first five years. Each and every one of those years, we've shown fairly significant increases uh, in sales through effort upon effort to build traffic into our facility and into this partnership between our business and the city. Um, we've, we've, we're six months into this fiscal year. Four of those months are pretty soft months. It's really non, it's the non-tournament time for us. And we're tracking about 17% up on revenue. Uh, through that, uh, uh, through that, uh, that, uh, that time, um, our, uh, our 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 marketing efforts, uh, we continue to make traction with the the leagues, the, the families of the of the various leagues that are out there. Um, in the five years that we were there, it, we were really challenged uh, from the outset to to be a good community member and stand with those those leagues in their efforts. And with each year under our belt, I think that we've gotten much stickier, for lack of better terms, with those with those folks. We've added packages, various packages. We're trying to make the facility far more of a year round facility for us, even though tournament play stops. Uh, we've we've begun to start realizing uh, private private parties, uh, uh, folks using our facility during the off months for holiday parties, retirement parties, uh, those types of events. We are very, uh, we're, we're very keenly uh, focused towards acquiring more of those. Um, we, we, see, we see continual growth uh, in, in our revenue out there. The incentive's on us to make sure that we hit it to get a return for our investment. And I guess my, my concern is that when <clears throat> we were approached to this, first off, I was just could not believe it's been five years. That was my first thought. I said, where did the time go to? I did five years, and then I started thinking, how many times have I heard an advertisement or saw an advertisement for this facility anywhere through the city of Sparks and their system or anything else like that? And I could not remember one time 
seeing anything locally advertised on on, on the um, uh, the facility, and then I just had, <laughs> had a lunch appointment, and uh, um, you know, a group that meets at uh, you know the golf course, Wingfield Springs, up there every week, and they were saying that they wanted to find another place to meet, but they really don't have any place on out there to go ahead and they can meet once a week and have food and beverages there. And I said, well, have you ever thought about Golden Eagle Regional Park? And, you know, the, the light went on because that's not known as being a a local facility. That's not that's only known as for the softball players and the teams come in, not local people. Uh, and I think that that's, if you're going to survive, I'm not in your business with it, that it takes local dollars and everything, every business takes local dollars to go ahead and survive it. So that that's my biggest concern here is that, you know, what what do we have in place, um, you know, because before the situation is you had the monkey on your back to perform, now it's it's you have the monkey on our back, but we pay the price for it if you don't perform. I mean, that's that's the that's the uh, um, scenario. So I'm I'm more concerned with the marketing, the performa. How do we get back to the original numbers, and how long is that going to take to do it? I, I, I would like to see some type of graduating scale in place where there's some incentive that um, we can we can work those things on. Through. Okay. So that's just my two cents here, and I'm more than happy to. To you know, work on some ideas to go and do that. But I, you know, I can't stress enough. Thank you for that investment in the community. It's it's a wonderful facility, and I appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ray. So I guess I have a, I have a couple questions. So the the six percent of annual sales that we have not achieved because you needed to hit, hit a specific amount. Correct. Does lowering the lease rate to this level allow right. us to achieve that amount? Um, we're also lowering the break, uh, the break point. We're, we're, we're increasing our percentage from the 6% uh, up to 8% on anything over $600,000 in sales. Oh, so, okay, uh, I didn't catch that. So the one, the 1. 1.6 million is replaced by 600,000 in that sales. That is correct. That's the natural break point on, on, on the lease. So technically, um, where we sit, where we sit right now, the, the $48,000 uh, that you would be looking at, if in fact we were to, we, uh, you were to approve this, and our our lease structure would be $4,000 a month. Um, if we followed suit with the, the sales increase that we sit at right now, technically you would be uh, at the end of this lease year, uh, you would be in a percentage rent scenario. Uh, Getting four to five thousand dollars on top of that forty-eight, so rent a rent for this fiscal year would be between fifty-two and fifty-three thousand dollars. Okay, and then as you track out moving forward, if mm -hmm. you were to to be able to achieve a better share of the market for some of the non mm -hmm. non tournament, not non league business, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. um, is there a is there a future point on your performer where you see? the revenue to the city being back up to the level that it is now? Um, in order to get the revenue at, uh, at what is in front of you, um, where the city, uh, we would be back up at $100,000. We would, it would roughly take us a little over $1.2 million in sales uh, to, for the city to realize um, uh, the rent structure that we were paying. And to make sure I'm following that, would mean you would be doubling your current sales? We'd be doubling our current sales. Um, if you look at the numbers that are before you from our historical look back in the five years that we've been there, um, we, we've shown uh, substantial increases on a year-over-year -year basis each and every time. And to kind of go back to a comment that was said earlier, and, and I, I agree this is the, that, the, that the, uh, we, we are asking for a concession um, for the investment we made to the facility. Um, but it's in our best interest, uh, 100 percent, uh, to more than reach that number. I would hope that we would reach, we would get the, we would get back to what we had been paid in three and a half, four years, I would hope. I would hope that we could get it to that. And then I guess my other question is, so it's an option to renew for every five years. So the assumption would be that this uh, 4,000 dollars per month would be in place for the next five years plus the eight percent of anything above six hundred thousand correct and then there'd be another conversation in five years 
certainly have that right to exercise that to uh, to go into the next five year it's option extension. That right forever. That, that's my question. So so right now the way the contract reads, I think he has the right to exercise an option. So would the option be? So that would be my only concern. Is can we? I'm, I'm okay with everything in here, except I would like to amend the contract so that at that next five year point, both parties have the ability to to relook at the rate. That it's not just an automatic extension at the rate that we've negotiated, because I do think that that's how it reads now. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And is that something that you would be comfortable with? Yes. Okay. Is that it? Mr. Kerrigan. Well, <coughs> Julie just took uh, my thunder. That's, I had no problem with uh, the agreement as it stands, except for in five years I'd like to do the same thing and have the option that the city may be able to increase, decrease, or whatever we need to do. Thank you, Mr. Lawson. And just the whole thing just doesn't set well with me, so I'm not going to support it. The bottom line is I don't think we should be in business with private entities or landlord. The rent is the rent. You know, lower rent down below market by half. I, I don't get it. Below I, it's above market, isn't it? It's currently above market based on whether or not they pay all these extra things. It's on a dollar eleven a square foot. And, and we pay the utilities. So in essence we're taking we're paying seventy five thousand dollars for him to be there, is what the proposal in front of me today says. We're taking a fifty two thousand dollar cut plus the utilities of twenty four thousand. So we're, we're, we're eating seventy five thousand dollars to let this restaurant be there. We're paying three of the five utilities right now and yeah. if they were paying it, they should be paying the eighty three hundred a month, but they're not paying that and and the the I'm really sorry but my, my print is so light here. Um, the going rate is based on them paying utilities and paying for exterior maintenance and paying for the common area around them at $2 a square foot. They don't pay any of that, so they are paying way more than the going rate now. They, because they're, they're, all of that's, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Jack, but they're, those expenses are not on the tenant. They're on us, and so, so that two dollars. Or else, he would pay that, though. That is correct. So, in essence, you add that to the number. Okay. So it's more money. So when we go down to a four thousand a month, we go to a dollar eleven a square foot, which right. is below market. Well below market, with the utilities paid. Because if you add that back in, you got to add that twenty four thousand bucks back. In. Actually, got to add seventy five thousand because we're taking a fifty two thousand dollar loss. Right. The numbers don't work out for me. I'd like to see it rebid. I understand that uh, you have a great investment there, but I also understand that I haven't seen any advertising out of you either. I haven't seen an advertisement one. Um, a lot of the ways that, a lot of the things that uh, our business does is we try to partner and work with various community organizations. And the marketing efforts that we get through those are we're making the we're making hand to hand a hand to hand relationship. We were the caterer to the mayor's golf tournament a few uh, a few years ago, um, free of charge, I might add, um, and that was a way for us to put our business in front of that of uh, of the participants uh, at that uh, at that event. Um, I. Uh, I, I feel that uh, well, you know, I, I, I feel that uh, um, if it's if it's placing an ad in a newspaper and doing those types of things, um, we have a presence. We have a presence um, uh, uh, on the web. Uh, we uh, we will continue. We've we've done zip code mailers. We've done val packs. We've done in the neighborhood. We've done z best. We'll continue to do those things. They're all done for the purpose of trying to build traffic in our restaurant. Like I said, I still have a problem. We're supplementing the business. So I, I'd like, I'm not going to vote for it just for that reason. Nowhere else in uh, Washoe County can you get the landlord to supplement you $75,000 a year. Mr. Kerrigan. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to make a motion to see how it goes. Um, 
Uh, I move to approve the amendments of, to the agreement for Golden Eagle Regional Park concession services as presented by staff with the addition of a five-year look into the contract. Okay. Uh, do we have a second for discussion? I'll second for discussion. Okay, it's been moved by Councilman Kerrigan, seconded by Councilman Schmidt to approve the amendment uh, as written by staff with the um, uh, amendment by Mr. Kerrigan. Questions, Ms. Ratty? Um, so, first of all, I'd like to strengthen that motion just a little bit more than just to be a look, because I think what we're not now is a, a relationship where they have an automatic option, and so I want to eliminate that automatic option with, to allow for the negotiation of the rate. So I don't want to just review it. I want to be able to say that at the five-year mark, because right, I, if I understand this correctly, five years from now, if we approve $4,000 the way the contract is currently written, they have an automatic right for another five years at that rate. Is that correct? With written notice, as they did this time. As we did this time, we have a, we we have we we have a pre-existing automatic right, which we've exercised. Uh, but just make sure I understand, your pre-existing automatic right is at eight thousand three hundred thirty-three dollars a month. Correct. That's correct. So I'm still saying you have an automatic right to renew, but that there's a negotiation of the rate. That that's what I'm asking. Okay. Does that make sense? That's fine. So I, I uh, that's for, what I that's what I tried. That, that's what your motion was. That's what I. <laughs> Meant to say. Okay, okay. great. Okay. That's fine. Well, what then, I really meant to say is what Julia just said. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd like to um, explain, I guess, why I'm going to support it. I, I do believe that we have public private partnerships all over town mm -hmm. um, and that this is a public private partnership, and I do believe in those philosophically. Um, I, do, I think it's a, it's a ridiculously tough location. I mean, in business, it's location, location, location. And so for six months, it's brilliant. And for the other six months, not so much. And so um, I do think that if it's important to us to have this kind of a, an amenity there for the um, clients that we have coming to Golden Eagle Park, and we are treating Golden Eagle Park more and more like an economic development, the economic development gem that it is, this is an amenity that we have to have. So I do believe it's a public-private partnership. I'm perfectly okay with saying that we're willing to offer a rate that's below market rate because we are trying to create an amenity in a facility that has that creates more room right nights than all the rest of the special events combined. So that's why I'm willing to support it. Mr. Schmidt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Tracy, we just can't go and rebid this, correct? I mean, it, he's got an option. He can exercise his option at the thing. We just can't arbitrarily say we're going to rebuild it, rebid it. Not if he accepts his option. Mm -hmm. If he accepts his option the way it is. You're right. Yeah. It's, um, I put that in there because it's certainly a possibility, but their intent, as well as, as mine, is to continue our relationship for the next 10 years. Um, it's working out well. It's improving. Um, we're working together better on uh, signage at the entrance of the park. We are working together better on getting advertising out through our activity guide, which is a value uh, to our community going out 30, 35,000 strong twice a year. Um, they've improved some signage on the building itself to allow, let people know that it's open because you don't know until you get to their, you know, their stairs. But the intent is to continue this relationship. Um, I put that option in there, but the timing is bad. I mean, if we, if we don't accept this now, the, uh, the timing is just, it, it wouldn't be good if we went out to bid to start over. Uh, let, let me just throw something out to see if the council and the, the owner would want to take a look at this. I, I do agree with Mr. Lawson that I think July is the wrong time for this contract. I think that that is uh, to right in the middle of the busy season. And if he decided not to exercise his contract, we're done for the for you know we lose a big chunk of money and trying to get somebody else in there. So I think there is some value of moving this to uh, a January contract date. Well, would it, is there any appetite to look at this at two and a half years, redo the extension for two and a half years, allow the, you know, I think you're very aware of our concerns, yeah, and I think staff is, yeah. you know. uh, we're in discussion, that's what I'm just trying okay. to, I'm, I'm throwing out ideas, mm -hmm. but I mean, I'm, I'm willing to ask for a change of the motion on it, but uh, um, I just think that maybe we could, we could solve a couple of different problems. You're aware of our concern, two and a half years gets it back to the council, pretty quickly and we can see if there's been results instead of waiting for five years on this thing and 
and uh, and get it. You know, I think staff is aware that's a problem now. That we got to get we got to do something with it. I mean, we can't. Uh, we just can't take and give away the discount without some kind of. Uh, Assurances that we're moving forward at a, at a regular, quickly pace. I think five years might be a little too long. Scary. Yeah, I just wanted to, to give my two cents worth about the math. Um, if you take, if you just do this plain math, it's going to we're going to have a restaurant and we're going to make twenty four thousand dollars a year. That's how I see it. Because if we don't renew this, the possibility of the of the restaurant not being renewed, they could walk away, and then we're going to have zero restaurant and zero money. And then you can go out the bid. So I have no problem with extending this for five years because if it, if you make it, you make it. If you don't, then guess what? If you don't make it in three years, we'll have to rebid it anyway. And so I think that problem we solved. I have no problem with helping you out on this. Uh, I don't want to bring up a couple things that we've done in the city council to help other uh, businesses in the city. So we're in, we are you know, we are a nonprofit, but for as far as I'm concerned, it looks like we're going to have a viable business and still make twenty four thousand dollars and take care of the uh, residents and the visitors out there with some good food. So I have no problem with this. No, I agree with the extension, too. I, I think it's something we should do. This, this is a tough, tough deal here. Uh, restaurants are tough anyway. And this one uh, took on maybe more than you could, bigger bite than you should have probably. Uh, at the beginning, it looked uh, very, very good to us, I'm sure. Uh, probably looked good to you at the time. Uh, I know you've done a lot of stuff out there to get people in there, done some special things and those kind of things, but tough, tough deal here. I would hate to see this thing uh, not be there at all. Uh, we, we need some kind of a restaurant out there. I think that's been proven. It hasn't been as great as you want, probably not as great as we want. We would love to see it better. But we have an opportunity, I think, here with the restructure of going to 600000 and 8% over 600000 I think we have a, a good way of... Uh, making up that lost revenue that we're talking about and also giving you a little bit of break at the same time. Uh, after all, it is a partnership, is it not? Uh, it's not an ideal one, probably. Uh, could have been better going in, you know, uh, everybody shoots a little bit high. Maybe we shot a little bit too high. Maybe you shot a little bit too high. But, again, I think it's a partnership, and it's, uh, it's a moral obligation on our part to help you guys out, too. So that's my two cents. Any, any other discussion? We do have a motion on the floor. Okay, everyone understand the motion? <clears throat> okay, any other questions? Seeing none, please vote. Passes four to one. Okay, so you have your extension. Uh, you have your reduced rate. Is that what I'm saying? And then you'll come back in five years and we will re-talk about this again. Yes. Okay? Thank you. Good luck, and I uh, hope uh, we can all make this a better thing for everybody. Thanks thanks for sticking in with us. I appreciate it. Uh, 6.2, consideration of possible approval of an agreement between West Care Nevada, Inc. and the City of Sparks relating to the provision of funds for the Community Triage Center. Go ahead, George. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council. Thank you. George Graham, for the record, Housing Specialist, City of Sparks. And what i like to bring before you for your consideration is the um, agreement with West Care, um, Nevada, and the City of Sparks for the um, operations of the triage center, which is at the campus of the Community Assistance Center. And the, um, the funding will be a total of 87000 um, We've had a contract with West Care last year, and we funded approximately at the same level. And um, with um, all the funding, there will be a contribution of the four hospitals from Southern Northern Nevada, which is um, Northern Nevada Medical Center, Reno Medical, Renown Medical Center, Renown South Meadows, and um, Prime Healthcare. And um, the county also is contributing. They have a grant with West Care. And, um, and the, all the jurisdiction, either cash or in kind, is contributing, as well as the hospitals, to match the um, $500,000 portion from the state. And um, 
the total cash contribution would be a total of 707000 between the hospitals and the jurisdictions <coughs> to match, to meet that match, and the, um, to provide the uh, West Care to provide the uh, services to serve the inebriate and the uh, homeless and really a population that doesn't have the resources um, for the type of care that's needed. And um, they've performed well, very well over the past year, and we've uh, we, we the community of Sparks have reaped um, uh, benefits as far as um, people being served here as well as other in other jurisdictions. And um, that concludes really what I'd like to present, and I'm prepared to answer any questions okay. at this time. time. Questions, Mr. Kerrigan? George, did Rena ever pay? Uh, well, they have um, yeah, but they cash. Didn't. No, no, there's a in-kind commitment from City of Reno. But, yeah, but I think, wasn't it this year that they didn't, didn't pay for it? Am I not mistaken? It's not no cash contribution from Reno. In kind. For this, it's in kind. Oh, okay. Um, to the level of one hundred and sixty thousand dollars, I believe, in kind. But um, there's the city of Sparks, this year. I believe that there was some negotiations, or still, to a, as far as um, them contributing some cash, but I'm not aware of if any determination was made okay. from that. But there was some. Continue negotiations and discussions, but I'm not aware of cash okay. from City Reno. And kind, of yes. Okay, questions, Mr. Smith. You know, I think Mike's right. I think last year um, we decided to give to show them that we would do it because they didn't want to give any money last year. So I think they backed out last year. You're correct. Okay. Yes, you're correct. But they and this in year, kind. they did in kind yeah, last, last year. year. Yeah. Last year, yes, yeah. they did do in kind last year, as they do intend this year. Okay. But, again, I don't know what the discussions um, with City of Reno on their commitment of cash. I don't know where that's at now. Thank you. Can anyone else? Questions? Julia, ready. I've just been incredibly proud of the City of Sparks for doing what I think is pound-wise. And I'm going to get that wrong. Yeah. Smart. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, it's a rare instance where we are investing in prevention so that we can save some dollars on the back end. And I know the data is hard to come by, but um, you know, we we know if we can pe keep people out of jails, if we can keep people out of um, much more higher cost facilities and meet them at the preventive level, that uh, it's a better outcome for the patient and it's a better outcome for the local governments that yes. are paying for it. So I'd like to see us move forward. I would like to make a motion to approve the funding agreement between the City of Sparks and West Care Nevada for operation of the Community Triage Center. Do you have a second for discussion? Mr. Kerrigan. Second. Moved by Councilwoman Ratty, seconded by Councilman Kerrigan. Uh, discussion, Mr. Lawson. Yeah, um, is there a reason this coming out of the general fund, why we don't have a specific fund for this? Um, as far as with the CDBG and all yeah. that? Uh, CDBG um, funding, it's, um, there's a requirement of matching fund, and that's where the um, our matching portion came, and just as we did last so it year. Has, it's the it same has level. to come out of the general fund? Yeah, we budgeted it, though. Yeah, we was it was budgeted, yeah. too? Okay. Yeah. And it's at the same level as what we did last okay. year for Thank that you. particular item. Yes. Well, I think this is good for prevention, like Julia said or tried to say, I think was what she was talking about. Uh, I think it saves overall through the whole community. I think it saves a lot of money uh, having people not go to uh, emergency that never gets paid, and then our rates go up, and we pay more for emergency, and on and on and on. So this is, this is good stuff. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. Thanks, George. Thank you. 
6.3 consideration possible approval of an interlocal cooperative agreement between the city of reno washer county and city of sparks for the operation of the community assistance center you doing this to george yes okay good go ahead okay thank you again george graham good afternoon everyone <laughs> same <laughs> same replies um what i have before your consideration is the um community assistance center whereas um the interlocal cooperative agreement with all the jurisdictions of the city of Reno as well as Washington County. <clears throat> and um, the funding level we're asking is the 100,168, 100, and that's approximately the same level as last year. Um, the level, the amount of the general fund contributing to this is less than what we had last year. Last year, we hit the, the general fund was at $18,000, whereas now it's um, just the five, and we increased the portion that CDBG um, uh, was contributing on that. And, um, and uh, the breakdown, we have contributing other, all the jurisdictions contributing for the total cash of the all governments is approximately 1.9 plus for um, the operations of the Community Assistance Center. And um, there's different stipulations of what different funds can be used for. But it's a cooperative agreement, again, with all jurisdictions. I'm prepared to answer any questions. Questions for George? OK, Ms. Reddy. So, uh same thing. I think it's a good use of our funds. I mean, some of us are, know will remember the, the good old days when there was a Human Services Advisory Board that distributed a significant pot of money from yeah. all kinds of different funding sources to meet the human services needs in our community. And we've really drilled it down to a focus on making sure that we're meeting the needs of the homeless population. There's no question in my mind, I see it every day, that we have a homeless challenge in the city of Sparks and that we need to make sure that there are services available to meet the needs of folks who are struggling. So I will make the motion to approve the interlocal cooperative agreement between the city of Reno, Washoe County, and the city of Sparks for operation of the Community Assistance Center. Mr. Smith. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Ratty, seconded by Mr. Smith. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. Again, thanks, George. Uh, good use, I think, of our funds. Uh, Hundred thousand dollars to pay to help the homeless center is nothing really. It's not not a lot. I wish we could do more. Uh, the homeless center does a terrific job over there. I've been over there several times. We just had a Spark sponsored a birthday party over there for the kids at the homeless center. It was really a great event, and a lot of kids showed up, and it was uh, really worthwhile to see the smiles on their faces on something they would never get to do if it wouldn't have been for you know, us putting to forth something like this. So $100,000 is really not a lot to do what we do over there. So yes. thanks for approving that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to 6.4, consideration possible approval of 2014 Street Rehabilitation Unit 3, bid number 1314-025, PWP-WA-2014-197 to CUNY Construction. In the amount of 339200 Mr. Speedhump. Thank you, Mayor. Council members, uh, John Erickson, uh, for the record. Um, as the mayor indicated, this is a, a project of the uh, 2014 Street Rehabilitation Unit 3 project. Um, this uh, project was included in the uh, fiscal year 2014 um, capital improvement list. Um, where this project is located is on the east end of Richards Way. Um, and then is bound to the east by Probasco, so we would be um, rehabilitating Arndell and Kimway. Um, the scope of this work will be to remove and replace the existing paving in the curb and gutter, as well as installing a new sidewalk on both sides of the street, and then making a storm drain improvement um, in and around this location on Arndell. The engineer's estimate for the project was $360,000. Um, we received four qualified bids. Q&D came in with a low bid of uh, just a little bit over $339,000. We have 40 working days scheduled for the project, and uh, if it is approved today, we should be completed by the first week in September. That concludes my presentation. I can answer any questions. Questions for Mr. Erickson? OK, 
Okay, I'm not looking for a motion. Mr. Smith. I move to award the 2014 Street Rehab Unit 3 project to Q&D Construction in the amount of $339,200. Do you have a second? Mr. Schmidt. Second. Moved by Councilman Smith, seconded by Councilman Schmidt to approve 6.4 Street Rehabilitation Program. Rehabilitation Program. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. Okay, 6.5, consideration of possible approval of the mayor's recommendation for appointment to the Sparks Rec Parks and Recreation Commission and the Sparks Civil Service Commission. Mr. Driscoll. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the council, Steve Driscoll, your city manager for the record. Um, on behalf of the mayor, we have two actions in this particular item. Um, one is for um, positions on the Sparks Parks and Recreation Commission and the second action that we'll ask you to take is on the Civil Service Commission. So with the Sparks Parks and Recreation Commission first, um, the mayor is, is recommending that we reappoint Pam Baer, reappoint Mr. David Sexton, and have a new appointment with Gina Odegaard for um, three-year terms on the commission. Okay, questions on Parks and Rec? We can probably do these together, uh, Steve. Probably can. Um, and on the Sparks. Do you have a question, Ed? No. Okay. Make Let's wait and do them both at the same time. Go ahead. So Steve. for Civil Service Commission as well, the mayor is recommending the, there are um, two vacancies, both for three-year terms, and one is a reappointment of Michael Rainey, and the second is a reappointment of Lewis Robert Dennis um, to that commission. Questions? Okay, looking for a motion. Mr. Lawson. I move to confirm the appointments of the mayor to the City of Spark Park and Recreation Commission and the Civil Service Commission. Ms. Ratty. Second. Moved by Councilman Lawson, seconded by Councilwoman Ratty to approve the recommendations for Parks and Rec and uh, Civil Service Commission. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. Okay, 6.6 .6 presentation discussion possible approval of an interlocal cooperative agreement establishing the regional business license and permits programs, the City of Sparks, the City of Reno, Washoe County, and Washoe County Health District. Go ahead, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the Council, Steve Driscoll, uh, City Manager for the record. Um, this is an action that has um, been long waited for by this Council and um, the other elected officials of the Valley. Um, Several years ago, we took upon um, ourselves after direction from the council to look at regional services and, and to specifically take a hard look at business licensing and also um, building permitting. And this is a result of, of that project, which has been going on for a couple of years. Um, you provided direction to your staff well over a year ago to um, try to bring in a software platform that would modernize and regionalize um, those two particular programs. And as a result of that, your staff put together with the help, so we're talking about Washoe County, Washoe County Health Department, City of Reno, City of Sparks, and took a hard look at uh, permitting and licensing. We did a um, request for proposal under the leadership of Washoe County, and we worked as a team on that. We had several demonstrations and settled on the Acela product. Acela is a product that we're all familiar with. Uh, Reno currently does all of their um, land use and building permit work using the Acela uh, product. Both Washoe County and Sparks have used Permits Plus in the past, which is now a dinosaur, but we've been looking along with those, and so this is the same company. And so with that, we went through a very extensive um, request for a proposal. We developed a, a comprehensive scope of work to, to reconcile back to that request. And as a result, we now are prepared to initiate a contract um, with your approval with Acela. And the, way, the reason we have an interlocal agreement in front of you is that we will have a single relationship for the region with Acela. Washoe County has agreed to act as the, um, and the project lead and the fiscal agent for that. 
we will um, use our project team to work with theirs to accomplish the goals and objectives. This project is expected to take 12 to 16 months from the time we execute the contract to be up and running in full and will give us a lot of um, opportunity to do things online, to do things with uh, the customers from their point of view rather than ours. And um, very importantly, wherever possible, the four jurisdictions will do business the same way, have the business processes be the same. It does allow us to have our own individual governance where it's needed and where it's mandated. But when those are not the mandates, we'll try our best to have things be as close to possible as they can. Um, so what this agreement, which before you does, is it provides um, with an investment of $448,542.52 total for the city, broken down between the business enterprise fund and the general fund, um, the initial investment to bring in all the product that we need and have all the access, both from a mobile as well as a static basis, and then also with an additional $37,030.87 a year for the first couple of years, it allows us to have all of the users we've identified to access the system using whatever methodology they need, whether it's at their desk or on their iPhone or iPad in the field. Um, this allows all the users there. It also provides for a 5.5% funding for um, contingency for um, any unseen things in the project. It provides that your manager um, and his work team controls the efforts of the project from a regional basis and so that any modification of the system has to be approved by um, myself on your behalf before it can just be implemented. It doesn't allow any one agency to run off and do something specific unless they're going to pay for it by themselves. And at the end of the day, um, one of the most important parts of this is that it will be hosted by a seller. So we'll be using their onshore equipment. It will stay onshore. Um, we'll use their equipment, their expertise. They'll keep it current. Um, the prices that we have contemplate that for the first five years. And so it'll free up our um, technical staff to not only support this, but support other things and we'll stay current, won't be having to worry about tech refresh because they will do it automatically. And they will be responsible for contingency and redundancy. So if they lose a data center, they'll be the ones responsible for switching it to a second data center so they have full um, contingency so we do not lose operations. So with that, um, I'll open it up for any questions that the council might have. Questions, Ms. Raddy? Um, I do have a question. Um, so just curious how flexible the system is given the process that we're going through recently with medical marijuana with three, at least three jurisdictions. I'm not sure about the health district on that one, but at least three jurisdictions coming up with very different sets of rules and pricing and regulations for how you get that kind of a business license. So is that, would that kind of a specialty thing be ha just have to be handled offline or can it be built to handle that level of deviation? The contemplation that the four teams have today is that wherever possible we make things the same mm -hmm. and wherever necessary they need to be different, they'll be different. So, for instance, business licenses. We'll each have our own fee schedule and the system will basically be four side-by-side -side systems. Mm -hmm. We'll have ours. Wherever possible they'll look the same, especially the customer where they need to be different, then they'll be different. So part of the, the team goal as we go through it, we'll be looking at things like fee schedules and understanding where they're different and why. And if they need to stay different, they'll stay different. And if they can be changed, then we'll go through whatever the chain mechanism. So in some instances, if we decide we want to change our fees to be more like Reno and Washoe County, we may need to come back to you and adjust our current ordinance to do that, but we would have to justify it. In the meantime, we maintain the governance of those fees per your direction. Great. Um, I just want to comment that what a long, strange trip it's been, and, you know, going back to thanking our members on the Shared Services Committee for, you know, pushing this kind of an idea that was quite some time ago, thanking staff from all the jurisdictions for really seeing it through, and then particularly thanking the City of Spark staff, because I know when the bill came due, it was a, deep, it was a, a pretty big lift for us to be able to figure out how to participate. 
um, but we got it done. And I think it's a very important thing that we're doing for the community. So thank you. Mr. Schmidt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Julia, for that. And I, you know, I, I think for I think for the mayor and I who sat for I don't know how many years on the shared services. This is the number one item that came out of that for several years, and probably just about the only item that came out that truly is productive for you know the, the entire community. So I, I thank staff for diligently working on uh, pursuing this and making it happen. Thank you to everybody involved. Okay, I have public comment, Mr. Abney, Trey Abney from the chamber. Come on down, Trey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. For the record, Trey Abney with the chamber. We uh, strongly support this process, and we want to thank uh, Mr. Driscoll and your staff and the staff of the other jurisdictions for working uh, so diligently on this. Um, obviously, this is, a, this is the next step in what ultimately will hopefully be a regional business license uh, type system. We've now gone to where you can go to each of the three jurisdictions and get licenses for any of the three. Uh, this will be able to have renewals and other things online. There's no reason in this day and age that somebody should have to drive down and physically go to a counter and take care and shuffle paper around when we can do all this online in a much um, easier process. Uh, this is an economic development tool as well. This will help businesses that are looking here, looking to move here and expand here. Um, um, you know, it's one more tool in our toolbox, if you will, to do that. So we uh, we strongly support this and urge your support. Thank you very much. Thanks, Trey. Appreciate it. Okay, any other questions? Go ahead, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, kind of two things. Um, one, I kind of skipped over the, the secondary piece. Um, also, we've talked about a, a, a tech fee uh, to help kind of pay for this. We've not really discussed exactly what that would mean and go. We do know um, kind of what we believe would be a reasonable fee when the system's up and running that we could charge as an add-on to our current fee structure and go. Um, staff is suggesting that we take a little harder look at the details and then with your permission, we'll bring it back to you um, and suggest whether we want um, to, to broach that and exactly how and whether the amounts are there. So as part of the motion, we are asking that you approve the item, but also um, keep in, the, in our forefront that we'll come back and talk about a tech fee. The second thing I'd be remiss, we have some guests in the audience from Washoe County and the City of Reno and Washoe County Health Department. Um, they're here because they believe strongly in what we're doing as, as a region, and it's their team support that's helped us bring this back to you. So I just would like to, to recognize the folks that are here from that standpoint, because we would not have got done without them. It is the true sense of shared services and regionalization that we've been talking about. So with that, I'll be quiet. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, looking for a motion. Julia. I move the council will approve the city of Sparks participation in an interlocal cooperative agreement establishing the regional, regional business license and permits program, <clears throat> the city of Sparks, the city of Reno, Washoe County, and the Washoe Health District in an amount not to exceed $448,542.52 for the initial system investment, including a 5.5% funding for project changes, authorize the initial annual operating licensing fee of $37,030.87, and direct staff to return prior to the go-live date with a regional technology fee to recover portions of the project costs as presented by staff. Mr. Schmidt. Second. Moved by Councilwoman Ratty, seconded by Councilman Schmidt to approve agenda item 6.5. Any further discussion? Mr. Lawson? Okay. Okay, seeing none, please vote. <coughs> Passed unanimously. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Next is 6.7, consideration and possible approval of $440,000 for contract laborers for the Parks and Street Maintenance Special Events Support Park Rental Cleanup during fiscal year 1450. Good afternoon, Eddie. Mayor, City Council. Dan Hamlin, Maintenance Operations Manager, Public Works. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council. Casey Bond, Cruise, Park Soup Crew Supervisor for Public Works. We're here today in consideration and possible approval for $440,000 for contracted laborers to work in the parks, the street division, special events, and the rentals. Uh, currently, we're using our contracted laborers in parks. Uh, they uh, run our garbage trucks for us. Uh, they also are uh, running our lawn mowing. 
with the exception of one full-time employee. And uh, for, uh, for the streets, they're helping on the patching and the crack ceiling during the winter, patching during the summer, and concrete work. For the special events and for the recreation side of it, right now any, um, we try to use them as much as we can during the days, during regular time to uh, take care of our park rentals. They go and clean for our park rentals before they happen. And we use them for any special events that happen during regular time. That is stuff we have to do during regular time. And with that, if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them for you. Questions? Mr. Schmidt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is this in our budget already? Yes, it is. Yes. So we have to come back for approval of something we've already put in the budget to do? Well, we thought it was, since it was 440000 we'd just bring it back to you. It's not an additional to anything. It's, it's has been appropriations already done for. No. I'm confused. How, how come we got to take and go back over something like this when we've already put it in the budget once? It's my understanding that anything over fifty thousand has to be pre-approved. But we do it. We do a budget, fifty million dollar budget, got all the stuff in it. We don't. We don't go back and approve any other expenditures once the budget's approved. Contracts, yes, but this is. Mr. Kurtz. Uh, Neil Kurtz, Deputy City Manager for Community Services. For the record, uh, Council Member Schmidt, uh, this is in fact a professional services contract uh, with Manpower uh, to provide us that resource. And that's why we will bring it back to you on an annual basis. Uh, so similar to what we did a year ago when you first allowed us this budget authority. So that's our, our logic to put it in front of you today. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. Any other questions? Mr. Smith? Just one, the $40,000 to support special events. You get reimbursed for that through the vendors, don't you? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Okay, looking for a motion. Mr. Ratty. Move to, the, to approve the use of contract laborers in the amount of 440000 during fiscal year 1415. Mr. Smith. Second. Moved by Councilwoman Ratty, seconded by Councilman Smith to approve agenda item 6.6. .6. Any further discussion? Mr. Schmidt. No, that was the second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. <clears throat> Ron Schmidt. Schmidt. Passes unanimously. Thank you, Mayor. See you, Council. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. I don't know if I can get back on track here when we get to go. Okay, six point eight is the first reading. Bill number 2677, an ordinance amending Chapter 3 of the Sparks Municipal Code to align the code with changes made by the RSCVA and with changes made in the Nevada Revised Statutes and providing other matters properly related thereto. This is the first reading for Bill number 2677. The public hearing and second reading of this bill will be conducted at the regular City Council meeting on Monday, July 14, 2014. Okay, let's move on to public hearing items. Uh, 7.1, public hearing, second reading, discussion and possible action on bill number 2674. Are these all related, John? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, they are, are loosely related, item 7.1 and 7.2, uh, in as much as they are ordinances and they need individual motions. Yeah. I have prepared a background that will cover both, but we'll take them individually. Yeah, if that's, that's right. Okay, that's what I was... That's what I was getting at, Mr. Smith. I just want to say on these next few items, I want to congratulate Councilman Lawson on spearheading this. And yeah. this is one of the biggest things we've done in a long time. So good job, uh, Ed. Thank you. Thanks to John. Assuming it passes. <laughs> it's, that's neither here nor there. It's here. <laughs> well, with that, I'll wrap up my presentation. Yeah. 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 Don't push your luck. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. John Martini, uh, City Engineer. Uh, for the record, um, as the Council will recall, about six months ago, um, the Builders Association in Northern Nevada asked us to take a look at deferral of certain building permit fees. Um, they actually asked all the entities, including uh, Truck Meadows Water Authority and NV Energy. On uh, December 9th, uh, Councilman Lawson formally requested to staff to do the analysis and research. I was back in front of you on March 10th, and at that time I identified that the only action needed by this council would be the ordinances that are in front of you today. Uh, our ordinances for residential construction taxes 
as well as a collection of sewer fees are done by ordinance and need to be changed by ordinance. So with item 7.1, uh, staff is proposing uh, an amendment uh, that will allow for fees to be paid at time of issuance or can be deferred. Uh, based on comments that came from the council with respect to um, the risk of time, if you will, I wrote into this ordinance that uh, they can be deferred until time of CFO or 12 months, whichever comes first. As well, the ordinance also includes restrictive language that will not allow the building official to issue a certificate of occupancy prior to the collection of these fees. Uh, with that, that covers 7.1. I'm available with any questions. Questions for John. Mr. Lawson. I just want to point out that John's uh, putting the time frame on there, the 12-month time frame, was extremely popular with the other entities also as, as a way to keep this a closed-in situation. So. We uh, kind of expect to see this from Reno and Washoe County to have a uh, time limit on it also. Mr. Schmidt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. John, I, I just want to make sure that uh, Building Association, everybody's okay with the 12 months. Uh, there hasn't been any kind of one to appeal. I don't see anybody here, but it looks like they're going to appeal it. So everybody's okay with it? Uh, to my knowledge, Councilman Schmidt, uh, we had a follow-up meeting about two weeks ago. Um, we, we announced to the group that uh, I, I explained the concerns this council voiced to me and that as our way to close that loop, if you would, give the building official the right to demand, if you will, after time. Uh, and I think, as Councilman Lawson said, it was well received. I've had no phone calls or, or I think it's comments. An important provision, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your work on it. Still, a little clarification. Washoe County had a little bit of an issue on certain types of development. That could take a little longer, and they think they're going to address that in their ordinance. But for us, almost all of our stuff is done within a year. Anyone else? Okay, this is a public hearing. I was going to open it to the public. Anyone want to speak? Seeing none, we'll close it to public hearing and bring it back to council for action. Questions? Motion. Mr. Lawson. Move to approve Bill Number 2674 and an ordinance amending Chapter 13 of the Sparks Municipal Code to allow the collection of sewer connection fees be deferred from the building permit issuance to prior to issuance of the certificate of occupancy and providing for other matters properly re related thereto. Second, Mr. Smith. Second. Moved by Councilman Lawson, seconded by Councilman Smith to approve 7.1 Bill Number 2674. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passed unanimously. 7.2 is public hearing, second reading, discussion, and possible action on Bill Number 2675. Go ahead, John. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the background on this item, as I said previously, is the same. The actual proposed changes to uh, Title 15 are twofold. Um, in Section 1512.040, it's a portion of our code in which we, if you will, levy the residential construction tax. I simply cleaned up the language in that portion of the code and took out any reference to the time of payment and then added a new section 15.12.041 that speaks specifically to the time of payment. And in that, similar to uh, the language in sewer connection fees, uh, the residential construction tax can be paid at time of building issuance or deferred uh, until time of uh, certificate of occupancy or 12 months, whichever comes first. And again, language is added to this ordinance uh, restricting the building official from issuing a temporary certificate of occupancy until all fees are paid. <coughs> and that concludes this item. I'm available for any questions. Questions? Mr. Schmidt? No? No questions? Okay, this is a public hearing, so I'll open it public. Anyone want to speak? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing, bring it back to council for action. Mr. Lawson. I'd like to make a motion. I move to approve Bill Number 2675, an ordinance for amending Chapter 15 of the Sparks Municipal Code to allow the collection of residential construction tax to be deferred from building permit issuance to prior to issuance of the certificate of occupancy and providing for other matters properly related thereto. Mr. Smith. Second. Moved by Councilman Lawson, seconded by Councilman Smith to approve 7.2, Bill Number 2675. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. 7.3 is a public hearing, second reading, discussion, and possible action on Bill Number 2675.
76, an ordinance amending Title IX, Section 9.34.083, and Title Section 5.08.020 of the Sparks Municipal Code to provide a vendor permitting process for vendors participating in special events in Sparks. Ms. Dominguez. Good afternoon, Mayor Martini and Council Members. Tracy Dominguez, Parks and Recreation Director. Uh, before you is uh, a recommendation for a change in ordinance to allow a vendor permitting process to be established. Currently, the ordinance states that you have to have a business license in the City of Sparks in order to do any kind of business. So um, that can be very difficult for vendors of special events that are not from this area, let alone this state. Um, the permit would be valid for the dates and times and duration of that event. So um, it, it's a real easy, user-friendly process that we're proposing. And uh, the promoter would be coming to us to purchase the number of permits that they need. And then it is up to them to collect those fees from their individual vendors. And if they bring back any forms unused, we will give them the money back for those permits not used. Questions? Mr. Smith. I, I can't find it. I was looking at it earlier. But does it say just on Sparks uh, property for special events? In, in it would be public property, correct. Okay, so if somebody came to a building like the conventions, well, that's not in Sparks, but into a private building and put on a special correct. event. We, that okay, goes through licensing. This is just um, vendor permits on public property. We do events on public property through Parks and Recreation. So the, uh, how come we don't do it uh, like at the Nugget? Because the other cities do that. If, you, if you're doing a, you need a one-day permit or a three-day permit, whatever the special event is for, I, I'm just confused on why we're restricting it to that. It's a matter of, um, she didn't make it, um, enforcement. And we don't have, uh, my understanding is that goes through the business licensing side versus. So you're saying they're buying a business license for three days? Or you don't know? That's what, you, they would have to do that now. I just don't know that it's fully enforced. They'd have to buy a, buy a business license now. If you have a, an event in, inside the Nugget, you have to, to buy a business license? Inside the Nugget, I'm, un, I'm unaware. We, yeah. Parks and Recreation does not um, get involved in private property aspect yeah, of you're events. You're just doing public property. We're just doing public property. I'm unclear on that. Francine should be here any minute. She might be able to answer that question. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Okay, I just, uh, I just not going to. If you do that in Reno, you have to have one. Well, you do it, yeah. You, like if they do a, uh, an event at the uh, car museum, automobile museum, they have to pay $15 for a special event fee. And the hmm. uh, it's enforced. They come by and check to make sure you've paid that fee. Or they, they actually, they, they make sure that. Uh, whoever the vendor or the promoter of that event is, make sure that they pay for everybody so they charge it. Yeah, the, um, currently the, the special event application process only applies to public property. Mm. If the Nugget wants to do something on their property, it does not go through us. Well, isn't that another loss of revenue if we, if we don't get that? I know, my, and the only reason I know this is because my wife goes all over 27 different cities, and in every city he has to pay a special event. Right. Uh, license. They have business license that she can buy for the whole year, for instance, in California, because she does many events in California. But if she does one in Utah or Arizona, wherever, she has to have a special events license. And you buy it on the way into town if you don't buy it online beforehand. It is, it is a lost revenue stream. Um, by implementing this on public property, we're anticipating additional $18,000 just for what's on public property. Okay, I, I don't know. I know I'm sorry, Ron. I don't I'd like have your. That too. I'll, maybe, I'll do that in the comments. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, those gun shows are tough. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Your head down. <laughs> okay, this is a public hearing. So, open to the public, anyone want to speak on this particular item? Okay, see so then We'll bring it back to the council for action. Questions? Uh, Mr. Smith. I'll make the motion. I move to approve and adopt Bill Number 2676, amending Title IX, Section 9.34.083, and Title V, Section 5.08.020 of the Sparks Municipal Code. Do I have a second? Mr. Schmidt. Second. Moved by Councilman Smith, seconded by Councilman Schmidt to approve 7.3, Bill Number 2676. Any further discussion? Go ahead, Mr. Lawson. Who's uh, counting the vendors? Do we are we going to Parks and Rec going to do that, or is uh, code enforcement? 
we will be doing the enforcement. So you guys, yes. someone from Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. The, the producer will be responsible for coming to us with a list of the vendors that they intend to have in their event, and they are going to pay up front for those, and we'll give them the number of forms that they've requested. Then they get it completed by the vendor. The vendor is to post one of the, it's a triplicate copy, so one copy has to go in their booth. Okay. We will do a walkthrough and make sure everyone has one posted in their booth. And if they are not on the list, we will charge for that permit at, when we charge for city service costs. We'll add it to the itemized bill if it's, we find that there's one out there that hasn't been paid for. Okay. Okay, any other further questions? Uh, we'll have a question for you here in a minute, Francine, but let's vote on this first. <laughs> uh, seeing no further questions, all in favor, or uh, I mean, please vote. Passes unanimously. Okay, Mr. Smith has a question for you. Uh, which we just passed the, well, not an ordinance, <laughs> but we, we passed it so we can charge uh, for special event licenses on public property. For people doing business during special events, yes. Special events. Is there such a thing that we have in the city if they're on, like if they're doing at the Nugget or uh, another building right. where they're doing a special event? Not at this time. Okay. So that's something we can look at then. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Francine. You're welcome. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Okay, we don't need a closed door session, Steve? No, sir. Comments from the public? Anyone in the public want to make a comment? Comment from the council or city manager, Mr. Driscoll? Um, thank you. I'll, I'll take that as direction on the, the private property for the, that. So I'll take that from direction okay, for the sorry, council I, I to look at. Okay. So thank you. Um, and I have two other things. One, uh, we will be not conducting a meeting of the council on July 28th. Um, we don't have any business that's specific to that date, and our clerk's office has an opportunity to do some uh, statewide training here at the University of Nevada, so uh, we're going to send our clerk's office off to do that during that week, so we won't have anything there. So we'll be pushing um, items between the 14th, uh, meeting the first meeting in, of July and then off to the first meeting in August. Um, the second thing is I'll be sending you a copy of a memo um, from the city of Reno related to smarter regions. They're putting together a visioning focus groups and they're um, asking uh, for participation by elected officials from the local jurisdictions. There are some future dates in July there was one today, but there was miscommunication as to exactly what these dates and times meant. We've now got it clarified. Um, so there will be several dates, and, so, and then each date has specific time. So to the extent that any one or all of you want to participate, um, they will be working um, with the dates and with uh, attendance. They will do the best they can to not establish a quorum because they're kind of working outside of um, – a full large um, working group at this point. So I will forward that memo to you. If you have any questions, I'll chase them down. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lawson. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, publicly thank our fire department for being professional and very workmanlike in their jobs. I, I think it deserves being mentioned that we do not have any of the issues that we see across the valley. So thank you very much, and thank you to all your people that do such a wonderful job. Anyone else? Okay, I'd like to request staff bring back to the City Council for discussion and possible direction a remaster plan and rezone the area generally east of Probasco, north of Prater, and west of I Street within the TOD to a commercial de designation. Uh, this will be just for discussion to see if the Council wants to go ahead with it. And I will give you this, Steve. Okay, anyone else? Okay, seeing no further business, we're adjourned. Okay, I'll call the order of the Sparks Redevelopment Agency meeting for June 23rd, 2014, with a roll call, please. Chairman Smith? Here. Agency members Ratty? Lawson? Here. Martini? Here. Kerrigan? Here. Schmidt? Here. City Attorney Thornley? Here. And Agency Managers Driscoll? Here. Thank you. Okay, I'll open it up to the public. Anybody in the public wishing to speak at this time? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the agency. Approval of the agenda. Anybody want to pull anything, change it? Move to approve, Mr. Chair. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 
Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, let me see. Recommendation to approve the minutes of consideration and possible approval of the minutes of the budget public hearing on May 20, 2014, and the regular Sparks Redevelopment Agency meeting on May 27, 2014. Move to approve, Mr. Chair. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, reports of claims and bills approved for payment and appropriation transfers for the period May 8, 2014 through June 4, 2014. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Passes unanimously. I'll open it up to the public. Anybody in the public wishing to speak at this time? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the agency. Comments from the agency? Mr. 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 Driscoll. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you, Steve Driscoll, for the record. Um, Regarding item we just talked about on the July 28th, we would like to suggest that we'll be moving the redevelopment's monthly meeting to July 14th and handling business there so that we will not be conducting a meeting on the 28th. Okay. I don't have a problem. We don't have to do anything about that. Just, just move it. We can just okay. move it. You'll post it. That's yes, all. sir. Okay. Any other comments? Seeing none, we are adjourned. Thank you.